Hey. That's the star, by the way, everyone. <laughs> That's his introduction. Uh, I'm Lay, and this is the last minute coverage of the suddenly scheduled Sivo Spring Classic Grand Finals between Exertus Esports, coming in from the lower bracket, and Froyotech, coming in from the winner's bracket. As we've uh, alluded to previously, I am Lang, the co-caster tonight. My co-caster is none other than Star. Star, how you doing? Yeah. Good. It's a nice last-minute Sunday night stream. I'm the only person you could get. Bottom of the barrel. Great introductions for me. Very, but I'm very here. excited to have you here. <laughs> <laughs> Almost as excited as you are to be here. Uh, we have Truck Truck also with us uh, on the camera. Uh, I do just want to say that, you know, as this was so last minute, we don't have any cast assets put together. There was no time for any photoshopping. Uh, we just had to go. So, we apologize for the sort of uh, haphazard nature of all of this. And, uh... Yeah, so... Yeah. I, I need to talk to the teams very quickly. Star, say some word. Um, based on what we're seeing so far, the 20 minutes of watching, I mean, the Donger Tower spin around, waiting for this to start, I'm hoping the team's ready up pretty soon. They were scrimming each other just a second ago, so I'm pretty sure they're really well prepared to play themselves on Viaduct if they were doing that, which they're not. They're here on CP Sunshine, a map I don't know the callouts for a lot of things. Of course, I only know Chili's, which that's all your fault, Lang. I know Tetris. Yep. There's, I mean, it's an awesome map. Haven't seen it played in a while. Haven't seen it played, of course, with the uh, sticky nerf, which happened recently. Yeah, that should be really interesting. I'm eager to see how that plays out. Uh, I am being told that the teams are live now, so once the Source TV delay catches up, we'll see this match get underway. I do want to really quickly say, though, that this is a SIVO tournament. This is the SIVO Spring Classic. It's their off-season tournament between Seasons 4 and 5. And if you want to get your team signed up for SIVO Season 5, there's only seven days left in our registration, approximately. Uh, registration for SIVO Season 5 closes on June 30th. We have three divisions, Open, Main, and our Professional Division. And uh, Sebo's a great place if you want to play some competitive Team Fortress 2, come on and check it out. Season starts soon. Sebo.com. you got seven days to get your team signed up. Enough of me being a corporate shill, though, Star. Yeah, Roger this game, Dodger. This game is going to start soon, and I'm excited. Predictions, quickly, Steven. Predictions? I can't predict against Mela, my good buddy, but I don't know. A lot of people were saying they wanted to see 4G win. They thought they were going to see him win. I, I don't really know. I think it's just going to be a close, really good game. There's a lot of up in the air, especially about the demo. I think demo is pretty big on this map. Or at least they get to mids very, very early if they do a proper rollout. But then they're going to get there and not be able to do quite as much as they used to. So I don't know. Yeah, speaking of, like, the fast demo rollout is definitely a factor on this map. This is also a map where you can do an extremely fast uh, roamer rollout with the gunboats. And now that stickies are less of a threat, I'm wondering if we'll see the roamers on either teams use that to apply very early pressure to the enemy demo man. But we are live now. I'm going to go ahead and take this first mid, watching none other than B. Donsky on his initial rollout. Uh, the rollouts have changed a little bit since I last saw this map. It's still quite quickly, B. Donsky even hitting that little surf off the stairs there, arriving about the same time as yeah. uh, Banny. A little bit of 16 4 damage being thrown back and forth with these stickies. The fight just getting underway. Scouts running around on this left side trying to get on top of Tetris over here is 4G. It looks like they have better positioning, but they're getting all sorts of killed. Low health on everybody. They're probably already backing out through this alleyway over here to make sure no one else dies. Shade is down, so you know the biggest part of it already is gone. They're jumping back in, trying to get their medic. The Fragile finally goes down, unfortunate there. This is a little bit more even than it originally looked like it would be. Yeah, so there's barely any health on any of the players that survived Mela being the only living player there for Exertus. He has gotten that health kit, but it looks like he doesn't really quite want to take this fight. Although, actually, Alpha is in. Uh, perhaps a bit of... Oh, Alpha was... No, I see. I understand now, Star. Mela was behind. I have figured out, I've <laughs> solved this mystery. Mela was behind enemy lines, much like Owen Wilson in the early 2000s. That's a deep cut for you. I cannot follow that cut. Rando was throwing some damage out there, but it looks like they are going to capture. And they even come out with a severe advantage. Not severe, but pretty significant. Where I really thought that Exertus was going to be able to take that mid-fight. 
do have 4G getting very aggressive into the yard area now. Ooh, the spam, so coordinated from them. Onto that shutter, picking up two frags. Dummy going in hyper aggressive, keeping Exertus busy, and actually have Clockwork now coming in with the flank, and Lansky moving in right through that shutter door. Decimate does manage to pick up the Clockworker, but Lansky responds in kind, taking him down. The Uber is now up for 4G, and they're getting ready to push in here. Stuff. Yeah, they're going to have about a 20% advantage. They're probably going to be able to clean this up pretty easily. Player advantage, Uber advantage. Fragile still in spawn with 90%. Nobody to heal. He's just getting the last couple of percent right now, and it doesn't matter. That was a pretty quick, convincing round from 4G. So I'm going to keep my eyes on the young Grant Vincent uh, for this medal, see what he do. Danny, of course, known for being... Uh, he, he do fast, although as I say that, he actually has flubbed his rollout, catching his, his feet there, his wee booties, as it were on that ledge, so we're going to see Badonski be quite a bit faster. Uh, the Bomb now, coming in from Mela, trying to open things up for his team. Both teams are playing on their own side of the map. No one's really crossed that line of the sand. It looks like Exertus are getting the better of this, though. They're controlling the high ground just slightly better. The pressure coming in from the scouts. Clockwork getting launched away up into the air. Alpha is going to pick him off before he even craters. Not going to let gravity steal that frag. And Thomas Lansky is the only surviving player for Froyo Tech. As Exertus moved through the choke now, the Fragile's Uber taking up to 100%. That's much better. I don't know exactly what they changed. I think they just got the high ground better, weren't contested right away. The soldiers were able to just spam everyone out. Fragile has 100% Uber right now. Looks like they're trying to go through this left side shutter. Very popular place to push. Checking for stickies, getting everybody through. And they're just going to have to go for it. I mean, Shade is still only on 30%. They have a heavy fully buffed right now, so that's their, uh, their choice of defense. But it's still going to be a really tough push when people are invincible and shiny. Shiny, they are Rando with the big double bomb going across that pipe, trying to close that gap as 4G were holding right across the point, but it seems that 4G's positioning has hard countered the Uber coming in from Exertus of the Decimate. Still alive, picking up Clockwork before he decides he's gotten all he can get, though actually, no, he picks up the health kit and he does take down Lansky as well. Decimate doing a great job here of extending this push and extending his hold. He actually might get a clean flank on the Banny here as well. No, he decides not to press his luck once again. Just kidding! Decimate apparently believes he has infinite luck and he's actually gonna scare Banny out of there. Decimate has bought time for his team, the respawns are up and they still hold on to this fourth control point. I mean, it's pretty dangerous to push out anyway, he was a little bit ballsy, but... I, they're not gonna want to push out too much. There actually is a spy right now, Dummy just standing in spawn, I don't think he's gonna get any stabs in here. But the sapper out in spawn. He's, he's just trying to very, listen to his radio. He's considering very <laughs> carefully his <laughs> next place. Who do I disguise as? What do I do here? Clockwork is also on Sniper, so they have two off classes right now. Um, not really sure. He just, <laughs> just, just back, back, back on scout. scout. Um, <laughs> big plays, big plays going on. Uber charges are even. He was checking for crits, apparently, but... We're, we're not smart gamers. That's exactly what he was doing. He was checking for the crits. Thank you for the chuck no, chuck no. for pointing that out to us. I'm way happier thinking he just wanted to look at the disguises. <laughs> I've uh, played Double Man for a long time. What does this class do? It this looks like fun. 4G is trying to push out. They took out uh, two people. Decimate and Alpha look like they both died. Uh, Alpha is coming back up on Sniper. They are holding this pretty well, but they're coming out the bottom. Might be popping this Uber any second, having the soldier jump in. Pop comes out first Ooh. from the Fragile. Shade has a much better Uber, and they may actually be able to get this unless someone gets behind, starts back capping. A couple things to watch out for. Yeah, right now I see uh, no red people going in for the back cap right now. Alpha still not sniper, picking up his second frag of the engagement. Thomas Lansky holding it down for his team in that lobby, picking off Decimate. Uh, dummy right now setting up his trap. He actually does dead it onto Rando, although with the weak and stickies. Uh, he doesn't kill him immediately, but Danny does finish off that frag. Alpha picking up his third headshot of the engagement. I think he actually got a fourth there as well that wasn't a frag. Uh, he does finally get taken down by the Clockworker. And it looks like the push is stalled out from Exertus, but their uber percentage is so yeah, much further they ahead. Have a shade is still done. This is still looking really good for them as long as as they don't let anybody jump on Fragile, though it looks like he might actually be going down in a second. There was a lot of pressure there, but he's, he's he's doing okay. I gotta confess that I'm actually watching this match at about three frames per second, so I'm having a little bit of a hard time telling what's going on sometimes, but okay. it's, it's, it's all good. I've never had Source um, record or thingy work for me properly. Just remembering that now. Fragile's getting the Uber right now. They're pushing here into mid. 
Uber is popped. Uh, Badonski going in deep, trying to close that distance, doing a great job of uh, catching out those players of Froyo Tech as they retreat through that choke. Exertus going to recap their second here, and with uh, the late spawn from Lansky, they might try to take this in, although no, Clockwork has something to say about that. Picks up two, and he thought about going for a third there, but he's going to back up as his heals are not with him. Shade being sort of forced out of that engagement due to low health, he ate some spam there. Rando picking up Clockwork, being over-aggressive, I'd have to say. And then, uh... Yeah, yeah, Rando picked up have another to get one. I got confused by going through Chili's. They don't have the Uber, they're taking damage, have less players, Shade has got it ready. Might have some people flanking around in a second, though I don't think so. They're just going to be capping this. This nice little lighthouse situation going on here. And going right into mid, they can probably take this pretty easily as well, considering they have the Uber. Somebody's running behind in Chili's, but there's a scout fight going on in here. Uh, Alpha is able to win that one, but the Uber's coming around searching for him. I don't know if that's the best use of it. Yeah, Exertus are still holding way back, and Fragile now has his Uber. With all this distraction being caused by the flank of Exertus, they're going to get in cleanly through the choke and actually catch some members of 4G uh, out of position. That's Lansky that they have managed to pick off. Once again, they're going to recap here, and once again, they're going to try to push into last. Yeah, with some numbers the Fragile no, didn't they... even use. So uh, they've yeah, got but a they're still getting picked off at again, this door. Supposedly, they didn't really do quite well last time as they completely avoided the Uber and were able to uh, kite that around. Though Badonski's already getting a lot of cap time with that pain train on point, luring people over here, shooting pipes, no stickies. Just got to get this one scout to jump off. And there, it's one to one already. Pretty quick rounds, considering. Uh, I don't know. We're about eight yeah, minutes in. Yeah, I guess those are decently quick rounds. Four minute rounds, you know. I'm going to put that at average length. It's nothing to be ashamed of. Four minutes, that's totally normal, Steven. <laughs> but they can go longer than that. They sure can. Oh, this mid-fight already. Badonski down to 75 health. Just throwing those stickies around, waiting for everyone else to show up because they get here so much quicker than everybody else. Mela up on top of this Tetris, trying to keep both soldiers off of the, uh, the bell tower in the middle, but it looks like uh, Ex Exertus is taking a lot of damage over here. Though... Deaths are about even clockwork, running back, very low health, and they're really pushed all the way back and choke with Shade over here uh, on Lansky. Not really sure where to go, but Decimate... Decimate is exploded. He is thoroughly exploded upon. He was elaborated upon thoroughly by the opposition. That's a full wipe. All of Exertus was elaborated upon thoroughly. Uh, Shade now is going to have, you know, pretty much 100% uber advantage here. Make it 90, given that the Fragile has spawn. Uh, Alpha is up on the Engineer. Engineer can be quite effective on this last. I wonder if it's going to be enough to stall the Uber, especially now that the Demon Man's going to struggle to take down that sentry. I don't know. He's, he's putting it up pretty slowly. He had it placed down on the right, then moved it all the way underneath this, uh, this little secret area over here, so it's not going to be built properly. He picked it up and moved it again. It's not, not top-tier Engineer play going on right now. <laughs> uh, the Uber actually has come in from Froyo Attack. Uh, but it looks like just the positioning and off-classing from Exertus was enough to absolutely crush it. Uh, three players of Froyo Tech died in that. And Exertus lost to nobody, and they have their own Uber. So they're pushing out, making sure to cover all the exits. Uh, that sort of labyrinth bottom area is notorious for causing back caps. Oh, Badonski getting caught out of position. Clockwork trying to capitalize. Badonski having so little health, but he does manage to survive thanks to good coverage from his team. And uh, Exertus just trying to push through the alleyway here now. Yeah, a lot of damage coming out from Rando. It looks like they are going to be able to clear away and push through here, get onto mid successfully. As long as no roaming soldiers jump up into the air. Fragile still hanging a little while back. He doesn't want to pop this Uber because they're going to come and try and get here. Obviously, and pop him if they can. Going to need this for last push. Shade is on 90%. I thought he was dead, but I guess I'm just bad. Yeah, he actually, I mean, he did survive. He got out of that last push. So, yeah, Uber's up for both teams right now. Yeah, he does and, uh, get the, popped. Yeah, big bomb from Rando going in right through the choke, seeing that opening. And Rando single-handedly forcing that Uber amongst two different people. Shade still has his, and they're coming into the alleyway now, and they're going to Uber all over Exertus. This does not look good for Exertus. Their Uber is already over. They're already pretty damaged from the fight that they had before this Uber even showed up. So it looks like they're, they're making the best of it, but the best of it's still going to be a... Uh, Quite a scrappy fight. They're they're actually winning this. They they somehow Shade is on nine health, Rocket finally hits him. They somehow split up all the members of 4G and were able to make all the fights be 2v1s. And just through 
I guess better division of labor, I'll call it. They, yeah, they do when that clockwork came in here with like seven health and is just running after everyone, dealing enough damage that uh from the new world, I'm not up on the name changing. <laughs> that's that's random. I'll believe you. Even though that doesn't make any sense to me. It well <laughs> Randall's on that. <laughs> that's Yo, what I'm, I'm saying. Okay. I've been calling him Randall this whole game. I know, dude. Who I'm am just... I trying to talk about? Blaze. That's who I'm trying to think of. I... There you go. Blaze. When I said we put this cast together last minute, boy, did I mean last minute. Truly um... the last of all <laughs> minutes. Blaze. That's who that gamer is. Wow. Okay. Uh, in any case, <laughs> Fragile, with about a 20% uber advantage. I'm I'm so red in the face right now. Oh. Actually, Mela getting a big air shot onto Blaze. Even Not at one frame up. per second, I could see that air shot. Doesn't kill him, just knocks him back, denies it. He was probably coming in to do some sneaky nonsense, try and get at the medic. Fragile is with a pretty decent uber advantage. If they push here, I mean, Shade's probably going to be able to get it in time. They have like a second or two if they're going to do anything. Doesn't look like they are. Just waiting for some sort of magic to happen. People all looking through alleyway, looking through choke. Looks like Shade actually teams. might be pushing in here before uh, Exertus makes a move. No? <laughs> this is the Team Fortress 2 <laughs> scuttle a choke. Who is going to do something first? I feel like probably Mela's going to get bored and just do something. One of the roamers is going to get bored. They're going to go make something happen eventually. Though uh, scouts are up in alleyway to make sure they don't jump. So we're at this inevitable endless standoff. Although it looks like Blaze actually has Clockwork with him, and, uh, nope, they thought about making something happen, and Mela <laughs> has now rotated to try to cover. This is actually kind of interesting in and of itself, just how quickly these teams are moving to swap their coverage between Chili's and Alleyway. Uh, but yeah, this is, this is quite the stalemate. Yeah, they've got a lot of good places to watch. Choke is being effectively spammed. It's going to be really hard to get through there with all those uh, pipes just rolling on through. Someone just looking for an opening somewhere. It looks like alleyway is pretty clear now, but no one's really going for it. I don't think 4G is looking to push on this at all at this point. They have stickies up on the lighthouse, which is they're just waiting for someone to jump in. And here it comes. Looks like Rando is in. Rando trying to jump on Rando, but the paradox did not work. Uh, yeah, Shade was had really, really good positioning in those stairs there, and Rando just could not touch him. Alpha getting actually scatter juggled by Clockwork there, and he has taken out. So that's two players down. Make that Everyone three down. and no they Ubers forced you. Yeah, really, Shade is on 50 health. 17 health as well. Someone could potentially get him here in this chili, so he's picking up the health, not in position to heal anybody. But most of Exertus is completely out as they drop like flies. They just completely waited for Rando to jump in or Mailer or someone to come in. He died. And then they won the push. There you go. It's Team Fortress 2. Yeah, yeah but both teams held on to their Uber. That, that was a weird, weird push. It looks like 4G want to move this in through choke now. Shade does drop Shade though. Mela yes. with the big bomb hitting the 1-2 rocket punch. And uh, now the Uber is popping the fragile as they try to get these scouts to the choke. Although they're actually held up over at the Chili's. There's a big fight happening over here on the flank. Looks like they should be able to get this. They still have heals. They have more players. If they just take this a little bit slow and get their mid back, they should be able to have this. No Prabalo. Don't know where exactly... Uh... 4G is right now. Looks like they're trying to push through Chili's or at least peek it. I hear they're coming in through Choke, getting the Roamer to jump in, go after the Medic. Here comes the big bomb. Fragile should live. Everybody's there to protect him. Fragile backing out through the Choke now. It looks like 4G have successfully defended their mid, and now that Badonski is down, 4G is actually going to take this right through Choke if they can, but the... the <laughs> With the Decimate and Alpha both actually were flanked back on mid, and they did, they did manage to take down Shade, but they got cleaned up themselves. So right now it's just Rando and the Fragile, and they do have Uber. And I think they're... Are they going to try to come out and stop this? I mean, it would make sense. They are down players. Shade and Dummy are just coming up right now. They still have to walk a bit of distance to get over here, but don't know if they're going to commit to that. Looks so like they gave Alpha's up the point. Up from lower. Yeah. Yeah, they, they have. They, oh, they the have back half. The back half is coming out. They went up to push, and he just walks on the point. Clockwork taking a round without even a shot fired. I guess they knew. I guess they knew how much Uber advantage they had and just waited. Yeah, I mean that was uh, you know smart to go for that back half. It's so hard to 
clear that lower lobby area when you're in a rush and trying to make snap decisions. So definitely hiding for a backup was the uh, the smart play there. When there's but an MCS or maze there. It, it absolutely is. Uh, Mela getting skyboxed and almost catching the skybox rocket. That would have been embarrassing. Would have had to uninstall. Uh, 4G getting the first blood on this meta. Alpha going down. Badoski getting the uh, cross map pipe onto dump. Banny with his interesting positioning on Legoland, trying to spam pills down. Not sure how I feel about that. He does get taken down by Mail. And both medics are still up and getting closer and closer to the Uber, although Clockwork has something fragile. to say about that. He does take down Rando, and it's just the Fragile running away, and he gets picked off. That's a full wipe for Exertus. Yeah, Alpha did just spawn. It looks like there's a little bit of a fight going on here. They, uh, clean that up as well. Clockwork has been going insane. That's five kills for him already this round. That means he is doing work, in short, is what that means. <laughs> yeah, so that was five kills just on that mid? That's crazy. Yeah, there have barely that's... been five people who have died this round, and he's been there yeah, to that's... see every single one of them. Sticky's in the lobby, waiting for someone to walk into him. They're pretty obvious. I don't think anyone's going to be doing that anytime soon, but a lot of spam damage coming out, no one quite dying. Engineer and Heavy and Sniper on this Highlander last defense. The Sentry, where is the Sentry? It's in the same spot as last time. Uh, but so far, 4G is having a much cleaner Uber than before. The Sentry being completely ineffective, actually getting taken down before doing any damage, I think. Uh, Blaze up on that pipe on that high ground, getting just free spam, getting two kills there. Badonski is the last member left alive, and he is going to get picked off by Dan. And that's going to be 3-0, end of the first half here on CP Sunshine. Now, Star, before we start the second half, I do just want to make it clear for the viewers at home, and potentially for my co-caster, because I don't know if I explained this to you. <laughs> uh, but the way this grand final works is that since 4G, Froyotech, has the winner's bracket advantage, they just have to win one map, and then that's it. They win the whole grand final. But if Exertus wins here on CP Sunshine, it will go to a second map, and that is CP Granary, and then that map will decide they win. It looks like they are switching teams now. If you even just look at the points for each team right now, Clockwork has... More points than uh, Shade, and way, way, way more than anybody on Exertus. I don't know about the damage numbers, I don't have stats up in front of me or anything like that, but I'm going to guess he's doing a lot. Just a hunch. Uh, yeah, I think that'd be a pretty fair assessment, given that he had five kills on the, the last mid. Uh, you know, Clockwork, definitely one of the most aggressive, strongest scout... Uh, scouts in this game and actually I do just want to say that our cameraman is going to be rejoining the source TV really quickly he's having uh, some lag issues we're gonna to hope to try to clear those up gonna do the best we can to make this stream as smooth as possible for everybody watching at home absolutely uh, I would love for this to be smooth for me I I'm sorry to keep bringing it up but you don't understand what I'm looking at yeah, so, wait, what exactly is going on? Walk, walk me through it. Walk me through your technical woes. Whenever I watch Swords TV, which I haven't done for a long time, so I completely forgot I have this problem, it's like one frame per second, everyone looks like they're lagging. Like, I'm watching a stop Wait, what's your CL right interp now. set to? Zero, I think? Is that... You have to set it to point one for Swords TV. I've heard Source that before, T and I've done that, and it's never made any difference. Well, try it now. Because Source TV is only 16 ticks per second, whereas the regular game is 66. So you have to dramatically increase your interp for a Source TV to be smooth. It looks better, but not by that much. It's still okay. pretty atrocious. It, it, is, it is a little choppy, but I'm, I'm watching it for you, Cam, so it's hard for me to know. Either Any way, case, we're live. We started back up. Um, gonna be watching the roamers on this mid. It seems like there's a pretty, like, secluded fight that goes on on this tower every single fight. Where Rando, Melo, all the different soldiers are jumping up on top to try and control that whole, uh, that high ground up there. The cool. bell tower, as it were. Mela with the big double bomb landing on his Legoland. And Blaze with the jump as well. And just as you said, these soldiers are, are the focus of the initial mid fight, jumping and contesting that high ground. Clockwork now getting right in the face of. Oh! Rando got absolutely launched. I don't even know how that happened, but Clockwork uh, picked him out of the air. And this mid is going strongly in favor yeah. of Exertus with only Dummy left alive. Mela did a huge bomb that probably hit. Four of the people who are currently alive on 4G, they were just able to clean up that damage after he died and get on this point willy-nilly, no probalo. Fragile, on, on, uh, pretty much 100% going to be able to run in here right now. They did get spawns, they're not going to have any time to set up, you know, sentries or anything like that. They have a uh, 
clockwork on Sniper can make some magic happen if they predictably come through this uh, left side here. Though it doesn't look like they are. I don't know what they're waiting for exactly. Yeah, um, maybe a little bit of indecision. It seems like they're almost arguing over which way they want to go, but the Uber now is popped. Uh, Rando, unfortunately, hitting his face as he uh, tries to jump in and start this aggression. Uh, they're doing a great job of getting on the point, though. They forced 4G into the spawn doors with the brunt of the Uber, and then just immediately got on point, taking advantage of how quickly this last point caps. And that's going to be the second round win for Exertus. The current score is 3-2 to two with 4G leading. Yeah, so going to be watching uh, these soldiers again on mid. I really feel like the demos are just... I don't know, it's so hard to do anything on this fight. I don't- I can't say, I haven't really played with the new sticky nerf. I just hear very, very bad things. So I'm way more interested in these soldiers fighting up here. Got Lansky getting knocked off as Rando jumps up. He can't really keep in uh, contested quite as well. But Donsky gonna crater, get knocked up by something over there. And Shade holding very far back, ready to get out of this fight as they're losing a lot of players. Nala and Dummy trading over in the red chilies there. Both medics have survived. I think uh, Blaze, who's actually behind enemy lines here, with almost full health, might be going for a play in a moment. He's still currently hiding, being a sneaky snake as it were, and Decimate is on the prowl. He knows he's back there, coming very close to blowing his cover. But uh, Blaze has to go now if he wants to make something happen, and here, here he goes. He Rando spots him out. Can Blaze get the force? Expert Those were positioning some from nice Fragile. Jumps. Fragile does manage to hold on to it, though. Yeah, they should be pushing in here any second. They are down a player. They don't have to worry about that anymore, though. Alpha does go down. I think he was in there a little bit too early for his team to really help him alone in this alleyway as well. Backing up, realizing it, he might have uh, had a chance to pick him right there. Oh, and he does get force. Not sure which scout that was on a fragile dummy. Gets the force on mid, and Shade still has not popped. They're coming in through this choke now. Probably going to be able to get this point uh, considerably easier than they would have a second ago, if not for that. Uber now fading for Froyotech. Exertus have backed out through their choke. They're holding on to their yard now. Fragile is actually going to have about a 25% Uber advantage here. And if they just build this diligently, which they are currently with a scout, uh, they'll have a chance to move through here, although it, it's so hard to, to push through. I feel, like, I feel like these teams have really figured out how to hold on to all three of these chokes simultaneously from mid. Hey, there's a lot of ways you can go, but all of them are very risky if they know you're going that way. They're very narrow. Chilies, I mean, you don't want to get caught in chilies if you have to go to the bathroom. Uh, they're holding Bad very, point. very far back on mid. Just waiting for this uber push to come. And it looks like they keep having these passive holds where they're forcing Exertus to push into them, and then they properly react and can get out and re-win the push. Yeah, I mean, I feel like especially holding out of this mid, just sort of standing back is in your favor, because you can see down just all three of the possible entrances, and it's really hard to get surprised. You just see where they're coming from, call the coordinated spam, you force their Uber as they're coming in, and then you Uber back onto them with uh, your later pop, and it, it seems to be sort of the, the way to go here. Probably wouldn't be too bad to have a sniper on one of these standoffs, but... They seem to be yeah, cropping be up in really random situations, like who knew they were going to be in this standoff right now? They kind of just, just how it all ended up. If someone uh, kills themselves now to switch off to Sniper, that's going to be the one thing that sets both of these people off. Though, who knows what it will be. Yeah, that's a good point. Having a Sniper here would be really, really useful, but yeah. Being able to predict the situation and have the Sniper at the right time is probably... Quite tricky. Oh, we Both actually teams do here. have Clockwork on Sniper. I didn't even see him switch. I was looking oh, for really? it. And Clockwork is peeking Chilies right now. The Lansky goes down to a Sticky Trap, and it looks like they're going to have to back up even twice as much now that they have a Sniper. Clockwork is so stealthy. We didn't even know it. I was uh, looking for it. <laughs> I didn't I see know. it. <laughs> oh. uh, professional casting, as, as always. But there's a fight happening here on this mid. Shade getting the... the, the Skull kill on the rando. Clockwork, the headshots on a Badonski. Uh, both Ubers are still up though. Neither team has popped, but the Fragile's just kind of watching as his team dies and he finally does pop on a scout and that's all he's Uber got. actually is forced out of 4G though. At least they got that because, I mean, if Fragile gets out of the situation as well, that looked really bad for them for a second where no one's even really seems to be chasing him. That's, that was such a weird fight. I would never have guessed, like, if I had to bet lottery tickets on that, and not the money that the lottery tickets cost, 
I wouldn't have thought uh -huh. that uh, that would have got. I'm losing myself here. <laughs> it's okay. It's late. We put this together at the last moment. I haven't had my precast coffee. I'm sure you haven't had my precast coffee. We're all in a slump here, but we're we're doing it for esports. Uh, Mela actually in this lobby doing a ton of damage does get picked off by none other than Tim Dummy, the golden boy of gaming, Olsen. They have the heavy. That's Exertus up on last. The Uber for 4G is almost ready, though. They're going to yeah. push in here in a moment. Alpha and Mela are still both down. Mela has another eight seconds on him, so this is probably just going to be cleanup for him. They have this Uber. Everyone's in spawn. If they just get someone on there to start capping it right now is what they need, because those stickies are still on point. No one really made a run for it. There was no reason for them to have to come out of the spawn that they forced them into. But Clockwork now on the point with this coverage from Banny, and they are going to cap that up. Uh, good recovery there at the end, taking advantage of sort of the, uh, the post-fight confusion there. Getting on that point, capping that up. Current score is 4-2, to two, I want to say, in favor of uh, Froyo Tech. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense to me. That's, that's I believe, Banny. Very, very fast rollout here. Getting very close to the choke, trying to get as much damage as he can before anyone comes through. But Donsky down to 60 health, but Banny's getting pushed back down to 50. Things are looking pretty even so far. Watching these soldiers jump up and try and get their positioning, though. Uh, Rando just going back and forth. No one's going to die. Lansky 12 health might be the first one to go down. Don't know. <laughs> Lang. Uh, <laughs> uh, so fragile once again just sort of barely scraping by surviving that middle with none other than Badonsky by his side and it seems like they're just going to completely forfeit this uh, second here and that they, they have to 4G already holding up in yard the spawns just now coming up for Exertus both teams do have uber though and we see uh, two off classes for Exertus they have the heavy and the sniper those are, uh, those are good choices. Sniper, of course, to try and get this medic to pop as early as possible, get a quick pick, maybe headshot the medic before he pops, something like that. Though, I'd have to say 4G's been extremely careful, maybe even more careful than they need to be in some situations, so it's probably not going to happen. Clockwork actually went down. Didn't see where that happened, but he is coming back up on Sniper, and it might be a bad timing for that because Dummy is down as well. This is an opportunity for Exertus to push, but... I don't know if they're gonna they're gonna hear the bell. If they're gonna come out and do it. Mela actually is opening this up, moving quickly through that lobby, and he tries to make something happen, but uh, realizes it's not gonna work out, and just immediately jumps back into the lobby to get some heals. And I think Exertus are just gonna not press their luck again. They're gonna back up for a moment, get buffs, and then peek into the lobby. Though an engagement now actually happening. Rando peeking into the lobby. He sees a bunch of red gamers in front of him, and he's trying to do as much damage as he can. Uh, but it, it's tough. If he gets, you know, one bad juggle, one rocket, puts him out of position, he's dead. Clockwork is actually peeking around this corner on the sniper. He has a bead on, like, oh. three players. He misses the shot, though, and Badonsky takes on Dummy uh, over on the other side of the flank here. So unfortunate. Probably could have popped that heavy right in the head there, though. Just couldn't pick which guy to put down. And the Uber comes out from Exertus. They are taking advantage of Dummy going down and them having a sniper as well trying to exchange this though the shade uber is a little bit better and now all the real fighting starts to happen lansky goes down right away banny is down about even on both teams not really sure who's going to get out of this but decimate is still on the last point watching out for that back cap which could be the difference between them winning and losing that push is that they didn't have the extra player with them uh, yeah i feel like yeah if they had an extra scout there they actually might have won that fight but now clockwork in here has free shots onto the sniper. The spawns of Exertus coming up just in sorry, onto the heavy is what I meant to say. Uh, the spawns of Exertus coming up just in time to protect oh, Decimate. Madonsky Clockwork though so gets Badonsky. I think that's gonna kick off the push here. Especially because they do have a very slight advantage. They're probably gonna push as soon as they get it, if not a little bit early, and they are coming in a little bit early, but they get stuffed immediately by a decimate on the heavy. Just been revved up, spinning that thing around this whole time. Alpha taking a couple quick shots in there, but uh, has to get out. Looks like we're back to a little bit of a stalemate. I don't think they're going to be pushing with that Uber right away because they're still waiting on Dummy, but they're going to try and get the uh, the most of their advantage that they have right now. Five more percent for Fragile before they can really contest this. He pops it as soon as he gets it. Decimate up here still just revving that minigun, able to deny anybody trying to come in here. Clockwork sniping from the top right, trying to take a few shots on Mela up on top on the pipe, exposed. This fight is not going in really either team's way, though. Um, 
Xerdus got the better of it. Again, they're not going to be able to push out if they stay on this heavy, but even then, you can't really push out just because only Lansky is dead at this point. So, two members of Xerdus pushed out. I'm not really sure why. Alpha and Rando pushed, and the rest of Xerdus stayed back at last, and Alpha and Rando just didn't stand a chance. You know, they're, they're pushing into high ground, they're pushing into a fortified position, and, and Dummy they just got cleaned up immediately. Trapped. Sniper's pushing up again. This is so back and forth of things that just aren't working for anybody. You gotta come to a compromise here. Uh, yeah, perhaps both teams Lance still sort of so figuring out this map. Die! Die! Oh, in that situation definitely I could see the Stickies probably would have killed him a lot sooner had this been uh, before their imminent demise. Banny uh, takes down Rando with a keen Sticky Trap. Almost got Badonski as well, but they're gonna have to back up, losing a lot of players from trying to push out of that. Though they did, at least I believe, get Shade, because he has 0% on my HUD. Yeah, Fragile has uh, you know, a huge uber advantage, sitting at just under 90%. Uh, but pushing out here is so hard, as you know, we've said umpteen times at this point. It's, it's really easy to threaten bat caps on this map, and that's going to make Malo's the team trying to push out, to jump so out here. He's, he's jumped around like he wants to do something, though. They catch him out, they see what he was going for. He does take down the other rando. And it looks like they're going to try and make a push out of this Fragile Pops. He's chasing him down, trying to get these people into these chilies. Heavy here as well on Dummy. I didn't even notice that he switched to Heavy, but they're probably going to be able to kill him really easily right there. They're still all locked into chilies, and I don't know where the rest of Exertus is. They're all capping. They did not want any back cap. They probably could have sent at least one guy to help him lock these guys into chilies, but uh, Sniper's in here. They should be able to win this fight just based on the positioning, though they finally do get out, get a soldier out on Tetris, and pop the Uber themselves to push this back. I'm watching Clockwork right now, just tracking Alpha, trying to no scope into death. He has the SMG on now, and he's, he's gonna let him get he's away. He's out of there. So Fragile is done. Decimate actually, wow, oh, that's unfortunate. Decimate had three shots onto Shade, but this was not able to make him connect. Shade actually taking a ton of spam. He's still surviving, just barely. Getting down to about 40 health. Finally, Rando comes in and finishes off that frag. Rando actually on a streak here, picks up uh, another one with the help of uh, Alpha, actually. And then finally, that's Blaze, not Rando. Blaze coming in, <laughs> the and last having the standing. last words. <laughs> it was one <laughs> one person trade for one person for one person for one person. Uh, just finally, he was the last one to show up. So of course, he is a survivor. Just sort of roaming around now, trying to set up some sort of ambush when the blue team comes out, getting ready to jump on this medic, perhaps hiding on top of a barrel. Very, they see him. Maybe maybe a shadow through the wall or something. I'm not exactly sure how he was spotted out, but. Decimate's gonna die for it, actually. So, uh, Shade is actually on the Critical Zakrieg at the moment. Currently at about 70%. They're gonna have this just a little bit, provided that they can continue building. They're gonna have this just oh. a little bit ahead of Exertus. And actually, if Exertus push in here, this is gonna be great for 4G, because he actually, that's what they're doing, but Shade is actually caught off. He has no one to build with. He has young Grant Vincent to finish off the last couple percent of this crit, and can they do it? Fragile still doesn't have Uber. Danny's waiting for it. He's trying to line it up, but he has no clean line of sight out of the members of Exodus. Finally, he does see them calls for it, but the sticky, it didn't even kill that scout. I think it made contact, <laughs> but it didn't kill him. I, I think so. I think it hit the medic as well, but they don't uh, one-shot medics anymore, so that was even a, a long shot for that to you know, be the goal there. It does work out in their favor, though. Fragile and Decimate are both down. Medic dropped. Not dropped, but, like, you know, fell over and the floor. Right. Yes. And they're gonna be able to get the second point out of it. You trip. You tripping, man. Shade's still on that crits, and they're gonna have a very significant crits advantage when they want to take this into last here. And, of course, Decimate hit the smart play on the Pyro. Uh, given the, the great distance that a crits would have to cover here. Pyro is really, really strong uh, for countering the, the offensive crits. Yeah, so Rando definitely is watch. trying to push in here with all the heals he had, but gets juggled so many times he can't even move. And that's Rando down for this defense where they really needed players because that crits Krieg is going to be coming in from this uh, left or right side, depending on your perspective. Any second now, popped onto the soldier, trying to fire some rockets and find a target, but not working out in his favor at all. Lansky couldn't make any of that work. And red, uh, 4G might actually get pushed out of here pretty effectively. 
Well, Lansky is now opening this up. They want to try to get somebody on the point, but unfortunately Lansky was kind of in by himself, but Banny now coming in with help from the Clockwork. And if you had to have only two combat players left alive, it would be Banny and Clockwork. Alpha trying to do everything he can on that heavy weapons guy, but not going to be able to hold off the onslaught. That's going to be GG 5-2. Froyo Tech win it, and that's actually the end of the SIBO Spring Classic Tournament. Froyo Tech are your first place team. Yeah, Exertus close taking game home too. second place. It looked um looked like it could have gone either way, but I think that just 4G was more patient waiting for Exertus to push and they really capitalized on a lot of their mistakes a lot better. And though it might have been slow at some points, they knew what they were doing. Uh, yeah, particularly in those uh, mid to yard transitions, you're, you're right. It seemed like uh, 4G was just a bit more patient. Uh, they were more comfortable playing this peculiar assortment of uh, push routes that exist between these two points. And they, they really did seem to capitalize on the impatience that came out of Exertus after, you know, two or three minutes of, of stalemating. But yeah, well played to both teams. Always like seeing matches on this map. You know, it's a brand new map, but it's already given us uh, quite a bit of entertainment. So we're really excited to have it in the pool. And I do just want to say thanks again to Sivo for hosting this tournament. And if you want to play in Sivo, Season 5 registration ends in about seven days. So go ahead and get your team signed up over at Sivo.com. Uh, my yeah. name is Lang. My co-caster tonight was none other than Star of I'm, Internet fame. I'm, I am and on the Internet right he's now on the as internet. we speak. Yeah. And we had Curtis Russ, that's Truck Truck, doing camera for us tonight. And again, we apologize for the lack of graphical assets. We had to throw this together really at the last minute. This match was originally going to happen tomorrow night, but all of a sudden things got moved around and we had to uh, make it happen. So I, I thank uh, these guys for helping me put this show together at the last minute and uh, you know being around, being on call. But that's going to do it. Uh, this is the Team Fortress TV coverage of the SEVA Spring Classic Grand Finals. Thank you for watching and good night. Good night.